Adrian Lyons' films have often been controversial. Fatal Attraction, Nine and a Half Weeks, and Indecent Proposal all received considerable attention. But his adaptation of Vladimir Nabokov's Lolita has eclipsed almost everything else he's ever done. He began shooting the film in 1995. It is only now being shown in the United States. Initially passed on by every major film distributor, Lolita will air this Sunday at 9 on Showtime. The film stars Jeremy Irons in the role of Humbert Humbert. Here is a clip. Join me in Adrian Line. Welcome back to the broadcast. It's good to have you here. Yeah. Yeah, let me talk about the process first before we talk about the right, film right. that you have made. What happened? Um, God, at what stage? In the I beginning, mean, you, you were hired to direct the film. Yes. Um, I actually read the novel about 10 years ago when I was doing Jacob's Ladder, spoke to Mario Cassar, who then was head of Carol Co., that right. was then in business. Right. He bought the rights of it for me on spec. I then worked with four writers. I worked with uh, David Mamet, I worked with Harold Pinter, I worked with James Dearden, <laughs> trying desperately to translate. <laughs> if they can't do it, who can? Well, yeah. there you go. And, and eventually worked with Stephen Schiff. And it was tough because it's, it's such an extraordinarily complex novel. Um, it doesn't fit into the usual kind of three-act pattern, if you like. It's a five or six-act piece. And eventually, eventually, Stephen Schiff uh, um, cracked it, you know, with myself. We worked very hard together, and it was just a very good relationship with him. So what happened, though? So you went out and then cast it? You had a script, and what did you do then? Well, we, we had a script. We, um, it was a road movie. I wanted the movie to be a road movie, um, because I didn't feel in the other film, in the Kubrick film, right. and this was tough. I tried to, try to avoid talking about the other movie, but it was a little tough. I wanted to get a feel of the of this uh, of this pair traveling across America. I'd always thought of them a, a bit like the odd couple. It's such an impossible situation, you know. Yeah. This uh, this uh, kind of rarefied intellectual European intellectual with his gum chewing kid, you know, and, and the impossibility of the relationship. So um, so it took a long while to shoot. I I cut the movie for a year. It took forever to cut. It was very difficult. And then, during the course of the cutting, there was a new um, law that came into being, you know, when Clinton was uh, re-elected, um, which were, and I think it was called the Child Pornography Law, which meant that I then had to sit with a, an attorney for, for six weeks in the cutting room, with him, him exam, examining the legality of what, uh, of what I Vetting every scene, so yes, to speak. Yes, I mean, it, it was very tough, and there was a lot of screaming and yelling, and he was a sweet man, but it was uh, uh, something I don't want to repeat, really. And in the end, I took out, because the law basically said that you couldn't have a, um, an adult imitating a minor. You couldn't have an adult pretending to be a minor. So I had to cut out shots that I had done with the, um, with the body double, shots of uh, breasts or whatever. And so I lost some things, but I, in the end, I don't think it was very important, really. I don't think it, it impacted badly on the, uh, on the movie. Then we went to the MPAA. Um, where it was given an R rating straight away, so there was no problem with the rating. Then I showed it, I didn't, um, it was shown, I didn't personally show it really, but I, it was shown to different studios, and I got a fabulous reaction. I mean, I had letters written to me, I mean, more really than I've ever had on, I would say, any other movie, um, saying they were overwhelmed by the picture, and it was very gratifying, it was wonderful. And, and certainly two, and I think maybe more, executives from studio said they wanted it for their studio and then they kind of faded away and I, I and I was given to understand that corporate decisions were taken decision, decisions above them not to get involved with this um, subject matter and I do think that the climate in this country has changed quite enormously really um, in the last five or six years, I mean, I, I, this movie would have come out easily in the 80s. No problem. So the, poli 70s. the political climate in America has changed, and yes. so therefore there was a, the studios thought there was a risk factor with this movie and didn't, it was too hot to handle. Yes, it was nothing, honestly, it was nothing to do with financial considerations yeah. at all. Because, I mean, initially, I think the French probably asked for too much money, but then they dropped the price very quickly. Yeah. You know, I think that, that people make a good living in Hollywood saying no. It's much easier to say no. It's much more difficult to stand up and be counted. And Your passion to make this was what? What did you want to say in the film? 
Well, I didn't want to make a remake. I was very anxious to make a movie that reflected the novel. I mean, the novel, novel is horrendous. It's horrendous what this man does to this kid, Lolita. <laughs> and yet, it's hilariously funny. Right. Um, you end up feeling, against your will, really, sympathetic towards Humbert. I mean, you really kind of at times sympathize with a man. And ultimately, it ma manages to be a love story. So it, it was complex and, and fascinating and, and, and an extraordinary challenge, really. But um, if you wanted to get at one thing, it was what? To explore well, I one wanted thing. To, I wanted to do a movie that was kind of shades of gray. I wanted to do a movie that was disturbing. It's a, it's a disturbing novel. You come away kind of feeling feeling disturbed and I wanted the same thing to happen with a movie and I think one of the reasons maybe why I've had problems with with this film is that people are disturbed by it as they should be and they don't have a kind of a pat black and white reaction I mean I didn't want to do I didn't want to make Humbert Humbert Jeremy Irons Humbert Humbert I didn't want, want to make him a kind of just an evil rat of a man because I don't think I kind of felt that about the other movie, really. I, d I never really felt that, that in his screwed up way that he really did love her. And I th at the end of the movie, you know, when he sees her pregnant and polluted with another man's child, as Nabokov said, he, he says she's the, the dead leaf echo of the nymphette that he had once known. He, but he loved her then. Now she's no longer a nymphette. And I think that was really important. I think it was a kind of a redemption for this man at the end of the... Uh, at the end of the novel. I don't think he would have gone chasing around after 12-year-olds after, if she'd wanted him back, and of course she doesn't, Lolita. I, uh, I don't think he would have, uh, as I say, chased around after 12-year-olds. Would he have been, would he have been so mesmerized and, and caught up in her, hot for her, mm -hmm. if he hadn't had the experience with his first love? No, I think that's really important. I mean, his love for Annabelle, as a 12-year-old, she was also 12. And he was 12, and they were yeah, 12. on the Côte d'Azur in, in France. And he, he, he loved her for three months. He was obsessed with her for three months. And, he, and then she died of typhus. And, but he's, and again, as Nabokov says, he says that the poison was in the wound, and the wound never healed. And I think that he's, he was a man, really, who never grew up. He was a man who spent the rest of his life looking for Annabelle and eventually finding her. Um, with um, with Lolita, in Lolita. So I think the background was important in making him not just a kind of a generic pedophile, although he obviously is a pedophile. Yeah, he is. I mean, and and do you, did you feel the compulsion to say that in some, you know, make sure that you weren't backing away from that, absolutely, as you just said? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I mean, when they, uh, in the... in the Because I think some of my people want you to make a moral judgment about pedophiles. Well, in the scenes of sexuality. I mean, Nabokov makes a point of saying that she cries afterwards. She cries endlessly. So I put that in the movie. I think it's very important to, to just to keep on reminding people that she's just a kid in the end. But equally, I think it's important and dishonest to, feel, what, to say that sexual, sexuality kind of flies in the window at 18 when it's legal, when patently it doesn't. Yeah. So is that there's a lot of complicated stuff, and I think that it frightened the people this movie in um, in uh, Hollywood because maybe it was close to home. Meaning? Well, mean you, you, you know you can you can. Uh, <laughs> it's easy enough to make a movie. Um, movies of, uh, about necrophilia, for example, have, have been made in Hollywood, and nobody blinks an eye. But I think, you know, this is a problem. I mean. As I said before, the, 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 the climate has changed enormously in, in America, I think, in the last five years, yeah, with, the, with the John Bonnet uh, trial and, and with, the, with, the, with the murders in, in um, Belgium. And I think that people, there is a kind of fixation with, um, with pedophilia now, I think. Somebody told me a story which fascinated me, actually, that, you know, Mouton Rothschild, the, uh, the, yes, the winemakers, right. well, Last year, they've been doing a series, over the years, they've been doing a series of, um, of different artists, you know, Picasso, Matisse, etc. And last year, it was Balthus, you know, who does, specializes in, in, pretty much in, in kind of pre-adolescent kids. And he did a line drawing for the Mouton Rothschild label, which 
on the label. And it, it was just, but, you know, quite innocent, really. Uh, you know, I've seen it. But in this country, the, the bottle of wine goes out without the drawing on it. It's the only country in the world where you can't see this Balthus drawing. Do you find that we are more puritanical than any country, uh, modern industrial company you know? Well, I, I, you know, I live in France a lot of the time, so I have this contrast endlessly. You know, you, you watch the television. <laughs> well, I mean, you really do. I mean, <laughs> yes, I uh, you know, you watch the television and you see you know, people naked. You see pe uh, you know, women's you? breasts, and you don't, you don't give it a second thought. <laughs> I saw something on E, e Entertainment the other, the other night, and, and it's this mass of pixelation. Um, you know, you can't see their bodies. I think, well, why are they showing this, you know? And, and it has to be unhealthy. It has to be wrong that kids are, are watching this and, and, and getting a, an inherent kind of feeling, feeling that there's something wrong with a, with a human body. Six-year-old kids are getting sent home from school for, for sexual harassment, for kissing their classmates. I mean, it's it's yeah. lunacy. Are you sorry you did it? Absolutely not. Nothing. No, There's no, no sense of, oh, man, no. I wish I'd spent my life doing something else. If it, achieves, yeah, if it achieves nothing else, people should go out and buy this book. It's such an extraordinary piece of work. Really? Why? Oh, God, everything. The language. Yeah, the, the language is The it. language is just yeah. extraordinary. And, and Jeremy Irons reads. Lolita, he has you know, the best that, voice in the world. Oh, yeah, man. Really. You know, there's an audio tape that's just fabulous. It's interesting because one of, yeah, but he also reads the, the, uh, the voiceover in the uh, Yeah, exactly. In, in the, the film. Movie. Yes. Because... Right. One of the traps, actually, was to try and get in as much of the literary sense of the novel, you know, get the language in, because it's so extraordinary. But I managed to do that, really, with the, uh, with the voiceover, I think. Okay, take a look at this. This is another clip from Lolita on Showtime on Sunday night, August 2nd, 9 p.m. <laughs> And thank you very much. Okay. It's pleasure. always great to see you. Lolita, on Sunday, August 2nd, 9 p.m. on Showtime, uh, screenplay by Stephen Schiff, directed by Adrian Lyon. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.